All right, so I'm gonna go over on how to do a setup with Heroku. I'm um, just gonna follow the steps because it's been a while for me as well. So first of all, you're going to fork uh, this repository. So it's quite easily. I'm on a different account right now, so I can do this as well. So it really doesn't m matter what you name it, it just could be the same. Um, so you're gonna create a fork and basically what this does is just create a copy of um, the code that I've uh, provided. So right now you are in the fork and you can see it like it's forked from here. Right, so um, let's go over to step two. We're going to create a Heroku app. Uh, basically, uh, just look up Heroku, create an account, and then you are in here. So we're going to press new app, um, just some app name two or something, I don't care, perfect. You can choose, uh, well, it depends if you're in the United States or in Europe, I'm in Europe, so we're going to create this app. There we go. So we have now created an app and we're gonna go to the deploy right here, deployment method, and then we can just click on uh, GitHub. So we're going to connect our GitHub account to our Heroku. So, right, and we can just click authorize. And there we go. So now we are connected to GitHub, perfect. So it's going to ask you to search for a repository name, and since I have kept the, the name, green light, live, friend, locations. We can just click here, um, just copy and paste this name over here, and we can click search. And there we go, it has found the repository. So we can now click connect. And basically, um, we are now, we can now just see, well, everything we can do with it. Um, I believe this has a master, yes, okay. So we don't have to change anything here. Um, so in my guide, I tell you to manually deploy, which uh, we can do by just clicking deploy branch, but you can also enable automatic deploys. And I would advise you doing this. So it's now uh, automatically deployed and we can now just press under the manual deploy, deploy branch. And there we go, and now you can see that it is going to build the application. It's going to download all the dependencies that are needed. And you can see that the build has been successful. And we'll just have to wait a couple of seconds. So it has been forked, manual deploy as all good. Right. So when it is deployed, and you can see that it has been deployed, we can now actually go and take a look at our logs. So click on view logs. And what we can now see here is a shared key. This is the key that you're going to need, the secret key, which you will need to uh, enter for um, uh, to, to connect with this application. It's different. Uh, for each server, so you don't have to worry, right? So we can copy this and we're going to go to settings and here we have config uh, variables and we're going to reveal them, which right now there aren't any. So we're going to create a new one called shared underscore key and then we're going to paste the value that we've just uh, received, right? So we're going to add this uh, just to make sure, so we can also see here that's shared key. And what is now going to happen is the app is going to redeploy, uh, well not redeploy, restart, and this shared key should still be the same. So now you have uh, made it sh uh, shared key. Ah, okay, so it's I think it's uh, starting up again or you can restart it. Either way, if it restarts right now, it will have that same shared key. So 
So under settings, uh, we can reveal these, but we can also find where where our app is running, uh, which is, is, is this one. So you'll need to connect with this application uh, in the setup in Runelight, you will need to paste this link uh, for the URL and the shared key is, is this key. So make sure that you only share this URL and key with people that you trust. Um, if you want to like uh, reconfigure or, or some people got a hold of the key that you don't trust, you can always um, delete this shared key by doing here delete and then redeploy it and then go to your logs to receive a different shared key. Uh, and then you will have to re, uh, reset uh, everything here again then. So that is everything, I believe. Um, let's just also quickly go over when um, some updates uh, are added to the API. Uh, if I maybe update the app and some updates needed to change um, in the API as well. So normally, if this is um, if this is automatic, um, if any changes are made in your repository, in your forked repository, then these changes will deploy automatically. And we can just quickly test this if you want to. Uh, you don't have to change any of the code, but this is a readme. This is just a text file, basically. You can go ahead and edit this, and you can just add a new line if you want to, and uh, call it test. Right. Um, so we can commit the changes and so now we have test at the bottom here and if everything goes right um, we can go to overview and we can see that a new build is in progress right and once that's deployed we can go ahead and look at the, so the build is successful shouldn't take too long, of course. Right, and if we go to logs again, we can see that it's, um, again, it's changed to uh, running. Perfect. Um, now, if you didn't do the um, automatic one, you will just need to uh, deploy again here. Uh, let's say that um, because I believe I haven't so to just uh, see uh, to update your branch in GitHub, you just need to click here on uh, fetch upstream and then fetch and merge and then everything uh, should be updated in your GitHub repository as well and then it should deploy here as well or you need to manually deploy it. And that should be everything.